the greatest American alive. What is it about working men and women that they find so offensive? Why, why are they so mad about folks just trying to make a living? Keep a roof over their heads. Thank you so much, President Barack Obama, ex-President Barack Obama. I salute you once upon a time. You were almost the greatest American alive. You were close, but man, you did some things that Project Day disagrees with. But that introduction was wonderful. What is so offensive about working class Americans? Yes. And who is this group of people who are so offended by working class Americans just trying to survive? We're going to have a conversation today about these people who are so offended about you, the greatest American alive, just trying to survive, just trying to feed your family. Yes. We're going to dive in and have just a little bit of a conversation about one or two minutes, three millionaires talking about working class people. And I just want to go into their minds to understand what they think about you. What race you are. They coming for it. it hey, it's uh, about it's the right. haves and the have nots right now. Period. Three gentlemen said a lot. They said there's a class war on the poor and the poor are not fighting back. They're not throwing no jabs, no uppercuts. They're not snapping no punches. The poor people in America are just getting beat up. Huh. That's it. Well, maybe people get back to work. They need to. That's no, because for real, there's so I'm many restaurants you. that couldn't open because they don't Listen, have enough man, employees. They're in the mode of not working. Ah, so they're in a mode of scamming. They, they learned right. how to survive uh, without work. That's right. What's been happening for the last 18 months? This virus has been running rampant in America and around the world, a global epidemic for the last 18 months. And for some reason, these guys, their response to you being out of work because of a global pandemic, their response to the greatest American life is get back to work, please, because I want to go to a restaurant. This whole thing, illness in general, is a war on the poor. Uh, delivery drivers were out there delivering food. Fast food res restaurants were open. Uh, grocery stores were open. Someone had to go clock in, and those people were clocking in. They were making less than $10 an hour. So when there is a class war and the poor have to go out there, not only fight poverty, but at the same time, they have to fight illness. People think that's a myth, that's, that's fucked really up. true. I got a homeboy. Um, salute, salute to my dude. I don't want to say his name because I don't know if I'm gonna put his business out there like that. But he yeah, owns, maybe not if it's illegal. No, it's not illegal. But he owns a bunch of franchises. He owns a bunch of uh, uh, a restaurant that everybody knows. Did you hear Charlemagne the God with that humble brag? I don't even like saying Charlemagne the God. What are you the God of? I ain't finna chop you up, man. I'm just listening. Yes, nobody cares about your friend who owns no wing stops. Nobody cares about no damn hundred dollar wings, Charlemagne. And he was saying, like, yo, he can't even get people to come back to work because everybody's so busy collecting unemployment. Exactly. Yeah. So now that unemployment is cut off, maybe people will go back to work. Go nah. get that $10 an hour, $15 an hour, whoever it's at. I and don't be it. too proud mm. to work at a fucking McDonald's or a, a Buffalo Wild work. Wings. Work at a Buffalo Wild Wings, but you weren't too proud to accept money from the government. Global pandemic. Global pandemic. Global pandemic. All right, poor people. Now that they stop giving you unemployment, get your butts back out here and get this uh, $10 or less. $10 or less is the best that we can offer. These people, they finally tasted a living wage and now you want them to go back to some job that's not going to pay them a living wage. Poor people, working class American citizens, why won't you come back over here and get this $7, huh? Why won't you go back and get this $10? My friend needs help at his restaurant so he can continue to be a millionaire from his franchise. I don't understand why you won't contribute to his success. Yes, I don't understand how you can accept money from the United States government, but you won't come back out here to work. Mr. Andrew Schultz, there are lots of companies in America who received hundreds of millions of dollars. Please, let's roll that footage. Good morning, Carl. Well, more than 200 publicly traded companies received those PPP funds and the, the total amount for those public companies now $862 million. That's according to new SEC filings compiled by fact squared now after you've seen that footage mr andrew schultz and all these millionaires who've received hundreds of millions of dollars do you have anything to say for yourself why are millionaires taking money when they could just continue to produce the product in which they were selling oh wait global pandemic that's what they claimed that's their insurance write-offs can the american citizen write off his losses on insurance Oh no, the average American citizen does not have insurance on his money. No, he doesn't. He does not have insurance if he does not go to work. What race you are? They coming for it. If, hey, it's uh, about it's the right. haves and the have-nots right Period. now. Period. What is it about working men and women that they find so offensive? And these three millionaires who are sitting on these couches, they have. And if you ain't got it, man, let me hold some. <laughs> Nasty out here, yes. <laughs> that shit makes no sense. Because right? I get to like, sleep late, you get to smoke, I get to buy weed from the government, government buy me weed and all that type of shit. 
They already used to know how to survive without jobs. I, mm. I wonder if you practice bad habits like that, can you even get back in the mold? Bad habits. People learned to survive not having a job. People learned to survive without having a job during a global pandemic. Man, I applaud you. You are the greatest American Live. You are so resilient. I thank you for your efforts and your struggle to survive without having a job during the most trying time of my lifetime. This is one of the hardest things that the American people have ever gone through. And when it comes to three young millionaires having a conversation, back to work, poor people. Back to work, poor folk. That's it. You can't like after a year and change and not, not working out. Yeah. It's so hard to get back. That first day of work, I quit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's why your stomach looks like that? What is it about working men and women that they find so offensive? Why, why are they so mad about folks just trying to make a living, keep a roof over their heads? What race you are? They coming for it. it hey, it's oh, about it's the right. haves and the have-nots right now. Period. The greatest American alive. You can disagree with Project Daddy. That's perfectly fine. It's your right to disagree with me. But I think that it's your duty also to have an opinion. Have some courage and get an imagination. Then come back and have a conversation and tell me some of your own ideas on how we can change this nasty-ass economic situation. Pretty please. Bryson Tiller said he only messed you over because you let him, huh? Working class people have not been fighting back against this economic system. Everybody wants to be anything except for what they are working class people everybody wants to be anything except for what they are working class people somebody tell me help me please help me please <laughs> everybody wants to be anything except for what they are working class people and that self-hate hating the american worker self-hate is going to destroy america me hating the fact that i clock in at family dollar oh my gosh you're gonna hold that against project daddy you only make 775 how dare you that's an abomination, you bum. <laughs> the commodification of the human person, the commodification of the American citizen is going to destroy America because you quantify yourself, man. Uh, you can look at your life and know that you don't have enough money to survive and then you'll condemn yourself. Self-hate, self-hate. <laughs> Let's talk about class, please. Can we talk about class? The greatest American alive. The US class system works as ruthlessly and as efficiently as the UK one in somewhat different ways, but it does so under a veneer of classlessness. It does so partly camouflaged by the myth of meritocracy, by the idea that, well, here in America, anyone can get ahead, etc. Shots fired. America's class system is so ruthless because millionaires like the three gentlemen who were sitting down earlier, Charlemagne the God, Andrew Schultz, and Wax from the Brilliant Idiots, they were having a conversation about how poor people should just get back to work. No matter how hard you work making $7 or $10 an hour, 10 years from now, the cost of living in your city will have only gone up and the wages in America have not gone up. And there's a couple of reasons why class is not discussed in the same way in the US. The really good one is because race is so much more salient as a, a, a fracture in, in US society. Hi, Project Daddy is black. If Project Daddy only talks about being black, that only includes the conversation of about 13% of America. Uh, me discussing my race and acting as if the only problem in America is race, that alienates my working class Latino people, my working class white people, every other demographic in America cannot identify with the black experience. The greatest American alive. I have to tell a better story. I have to incorporate other people in this story because on this journey, we can't get economic freedom as working class people in America alone. Fight back by telling the truth. Hey, I'm out here going to work every day and I'm not making enough money to pay my bills. You tell them, you're not going to profit off of me. I want all of me. I want to do that uh, Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Show me the money, please. I don't want to have any other conversation in America except for this class divide and how I can get some economic power. That's it. Which is a kind of sense where we're a classless society. 90% of Americans define themselves as a middle class. <laughs> you might not think that's funny. I think it's hilarious. 90% of Americans consider themselves middle class. Upper middle class is 400,000 bucks. Uh, lower middle class is right around $100,000. If you make less than $100,000 in America and you're trying to have a family, it's going to be tough for you. Who's destroying America? The answer is I am. Or at least the class of which I am now a member is. The American upper middle class. 
he ain't even American. But I'm going to salute you. You're not the greatest American alive because you ain't no American. But listen here, man, that's powerful. To tell the truth is powerful. Please elaborate. This shows you now the value of tax breaks, tax expenditures for the bottom 40, middle 40, and top 20. I won't go into detail. But basically what it shows you is that the tax breaks in the U.S. are highly regressive, and particularly because of mortgage interest and capital gains deductions. If you clock in every day and you don't own a home, hey, he ain't talking to you. When he says mortgages and capital gains, they're getting their money everywhere else except for clocking in. If you don't own a home, if you don't have money in the stock market, if you don't have money coming in from some type of property or investment, you're clocking in every day on just your peer physical, human labor, and that's all. In the U.S., to get into the top 1%, you need a, a household income of just north of $400,000 a year. To get into the top fifth, you need an income of about $130,000 a year. These are household income. Earlier, he said 90% of Americans think they're in the middle class. Oh my goodness, how can I think that 90% of Americans think they're in the middle class? But there's been no increase in income inequality in the bottom 80% of the U.S. distribution. The bottom of the U.S. distribution looks exactly the same today as it did in 1979. It's moved up a little bit, not much but it looks exactly the same. No increase in inequality at all. So don't let people say, at least in the US context, there's a growing gap between rich and poor. That's not true. There's a growing gap between rich, however you define it, and everybody else. The bottom 80% are effectively being left behind. The rich and everybody else. 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 That's all that matters right now. Charlemagne the God and his friends said the haves and the have-nots. What race you are, they coming for. It, hey, it's uh, about it's the right. haves and the have-nots right now. Period. The rich and everybody else. If you're not rich, if you do not have mortgages, if you do not have capital gains, making money without going to work, it is the rich and everybody else. And then to a greater extent, needs to go up towards the top, people are pulling away. So this is the pulling away of the top 19%. This is just income, but a class isn't just made by income. The second thing is that it endures across generations. Got to hand me down, passing down some poverty, passing down poverty to our children. I don't want to leave my children a legacy of poverty, but if working class people don't negotiate and work together to say, hey, working class people deserve representation, and the only way you fight back is to tell the truth. I go to work every day, and even though I go to work every day, I still can't afford to live. I know that's ruthless. I know that's a nasty reality, but if, if it's your reality, then tell the truth, yes? You can't put up no makeup on your face and say, oh my goodness, it's so good. You cannot put a filter on real life and make all the nasty things that come from poverty go away. It's not possible. What is it about working men and women that they find so offensive? Why, why are they so mad about folks just trying to make a living, keep a roof over their heads? What race you are, they coming for. It, hey, it's uh, about it's the right. haves and the have-nots right now. Period. There's a class war on the poor, and the American worker is not fighting back. The American citizen is not fighting back. There is no pushback. Right now, we only have conversations coming from political pundits who make a million dollars or better, or a few hundred thousand dollars a year, but they're in the top 1%. Uh, they're in the upper middle class that make between 130 to 400 thousand dollars a year if you're not in that economic bracket please fight back tell the truth about your life if you're going to work every day and you can't provide for yourself and your family please tell the truth that is powerful in the world of storytelling narrative is the only thing that matters have enough imagination have enough courage to tell your absolute authentic truth that you're living in perpetual poverty you don't want your kids kids to be poor also and the only way that you prevent that from happening is to start negotiating on their behalf right now you start fighting in the labor market right now and you discuss a fair market value for your labor you tell them that i get to negotiate my personhood i own my physical self my digital self and my spiritual self into perpetuity you tell them that you own your likeness for not only now but until forever you control your destiny you are the greatest american alive 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 the greatest american alive